What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 3 of our LMA Manager Let's Play here with Boston United and today we are going to be continuing on uh, well with this series. It's been a little over a week since the last episode. I've had a pretty busy kind of last few weeks but we're going to get back into this. Of course this is just a series where I play 100% live, chat with you about bits and pieces which are going on with me, the channel, all that jazz. And uh, all in all, we just we kind of have a good time. As you can see here, we have one Division One game being played. Why, why are we being told about that? I don't know. Answers on a postcard. But no, as I said today, we're just going to be continuing on. It's Division Three. We've still got a little bit left of the transfer window, just over two weeks to maybe try and make one or two more deals stick. I would like to add a few midfielders. I actually need to remember to release some players from my squad because if we look right now, our team is full, and we don't we do have some players here who, yes, they're legends in their own right, but re in reality they're just not going to play for us. So let's go through this now and quickly release those players who, as I mentioned, I don't think they're going to be making the step kind of up with us. But anyway, yeah, since the last episode, uh, a lot's been going on just really with me. I've been, I was away last weekend, obviously this weekend, as you probably watched this, the Euros have started, which is really cool, uh, and I'm, I'm well happy the Euros on. I love just having football to watch, so when you have three matches a day, to watch it, it's a good time. I, I just I can binge watch football, and uh, that does actually bring me on to the fact that with this series, I did talk about the fact that I was probably just going to play everything 100% live. This is the kind of game where it almost suits me just playing it in the background when there's football on. You know, when when it's a, a game that I'm not quite as invested in as say an England match, and I just want something to do in um, kind of whilst I watch it. I feel like this game could be a good game to do just that. So I might play on just a little bit here and there once we wrap up the transfer window between episodes. Uh, with this series, really I'm going to be aiming for two or three episodes a week. It's, it's a nice laid back series. As I said, it gives you guys a chance to know what's going on with me, kind of the state of the channel. If I've got anything I want to talk about in particular. It's just a quite nice platform to do just that. Um, and no, that, that's kind of what is going to be going on here. But no, it, it, as I said, I keep saying but no. That's like my that's my go-to word whenever I want to discuss something. But it has been busy. It's been a bit of a weird kind of few weeks. I was uh, away last weekend, as I already mentioned. I had wine tasting. Not perhaps as you'd imagine. It was German wine tasting. Um, but uh, I had that going on. And it's kind of just messed my schedule up, really. Especially with the Euros as well. You know, three matches a day. I'm watching most of them, obviously. I'm at work nine till five during the week. But uh, when I get in from work, there's matches on. When I, when I go to bed, there's matches on. It makes it awkward, actually, for scheduling uploads, but even more so trying to record videos. Um, but I'm, I'm sure I'll adapt. You know, I've got a month of this, so I've got to get used to it somehow. Obviously, there's been the draft mode um, kind of drafts going up, the Euro 2016 ones with Ben that we did for the group stage. Football manager, the guys over there on their kind of social media accounts, Alan, uh, who's kind of the head kind of... I don't know what Alan's exact role is, but he deals with all the fan site marketing stuff at least uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but he was really kind and obviously helped sort out and organise everything for uh, those drafts so that Football Manager could promote them. And it was really kind of them. And um, my channel's been doing really well as of late. You know, it's a weird time of the year, I feel like, for FM content creators. You know, the football season's kind of coming to an end. The, the current game's been out a little while. Some people have bored FM. Others, perhaps, not so much. For me, I'm still enjoying FM 16. Um, but so views normally you'd expect them to be down, but they've just been really good. Claire, please, is that in? Let's go, Daryl Claire. We are of course looking for our first one of the season. This is our second game of the season. We lost to Bournemouth. I want to say three one in our first game of the year. But um, yeah, as I was saying, it's it's a time when normally you expect the views to be down, but at the moment, and it's massive credit to you guys really who are watching just the variety of content I'm putting out. My views are like the highest they've been all year this year, and we're in June. Like I, I don't know why. I, I guess thank you for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. I feel like for the perhaps the last few months it's been exclusively Gibraltar Apex stuff, and yes, I really enjoy that save. And oh my gosh, what a goal that is by Cook! Right, I'll, I'll come back on to what I was going to talk about in a second. That's an insane goal there. Cook with the long range effort, the corner gets headed out. He just well, bang, bang, and the dirt is gone. It's in. 18 yards out, finds the back of the net, and we're, we're, we're doing quite well here against Hartlepool, as things stand. I can't remember what I was talking about now. Oh, the Apex saves. So obviously, my content, if, if you obviously watch my content, if you're just here for LMA and you've stumbled across this series and you're binge-watching it, I have to apologise for this chat, but maybe it gives you guys an insight into my thoughts kind of as a content creator. They've hit the woodwork. Um, 
this is a game full of loads of chances. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the con I don't want to say it was getting stale, but I feel like when you're just doing 30 Let's Play episodes a month, um, people don't always want to watch Let's Play episodes. I feel like there's a, people who are subscribed to my channel who just like the guides, people who just like the, the simulations. So I've been trying to kind of mix it up, and I've, I'm really proud, actually, at the moment. When I just look through the uploads on my channel, and there's just a big variety of content there. You know, there's the LMA stuff, there's the Euro Draft mode, there's the odd FM simulates here and there. Um, of course, we still have the Leicester save kind of replicating Ranieri. That had a, a month, uh, well, a week off this week just because of the draft mode stuff. But that'll be coming your way this Monday, so tomorrow if you watch this now. Um, so, no, yeah, I, I'm trying to really mix things up and it, it's working well. And it's one of those things where when, when the channel's doing well, it obviously it gives me a lot more motivation to continue to kind of work hard. And, um, oh, go on, Thomas. Well, he should score here. Back to goal. Bang. The dirt is gone. It's 3-0. We are running rampant here against Hartlepool. And it's uh, Thomas with the goal that time. The ball... How did this get to him? This was really weird. He kind of chests it down. No one no one closes him down. He just swivels and shoots and scores. But anyway, I feel like I've done enough rambling about YouTube for now. Um, but again, just kind of reiterating what I said. Really appreciate you guys who have been kind of supporting the channel. Particularly, you know, when the months haven't been so great as of like of the last few months but it's nice to have kind of the channel on the up and I think we're on course to have just a really good month in June which is absolutely crazy and I just thank you to you guys I guess obviously we had the um, Jose Mourinho simulates if you've got any ideas for simulations let me let me know them down in the comments also lets me know that you're watching this video and kind of listening to it all if you uh, provide a suggestion it could be you could just write Zlatan at Ibra if you want to be really unimaginative I have got that one ready to go um, I'm kind of waiting for that transfer to kind of hot up again and to be confirmed and then I'll kind of push the, the go live button on it so to say when there's a lot more people searching for it on YouTube and so it gets a lot of stumble across views. People who, you know, they're not necessarily into their FM content but they uh, kind of see a video and go, oh that could be interesting, I'll watch that. And obviously the peak time to upload a video for people who kind of have that attitude is when the transfer is finally confirmed. I have got some Euro stuff planned as well in terms of maybe FM simulates Euro 2016. That might be something I do. But um, no, it's just going to be more of the same really. Anyway, I, I love the fact that I say I'm not going to talk any more about my content. Continue to talk about my content. Let's talk about this game. We're 3-0 up. We should probably make, make some subs, shouldn't we really? Um, who's not performed so well this game? Uh, basically all our defenders. McManon has had a really good game, so some of you guys will know that McManon was a player I signed, and he's actually taken Redfern's spot in the first team. If we just compare these guys real quick, uh, it doesn't actually swap their positions. What you need to know is if we just compare them here, you can see that McMahon, McManon is uh, a little bit better than Redfern, which is nice, because Redfern's 37, but I think we're going to bring him on here. He's had a, a good game, McManon. In fact, let's not take him off of McManon, let's take off Bennett. I'm also going to take off Cook here, I think, for Angel, who can't actually play on the right. And maybe we'll make our other change as well. We'll take off Daryl Clare and bring on uh, Smith. Just to, just to kind of bring on some fresh legs in the final third. There's only 10 minutes left of this game. We've been very, very convincing. And well, Bennett gets injured. We've already we've already organised to sub him off, so that shouldn't actually be a problem. That's, that's worked out well. Hopefully that's not a long-term injury, though, for Bennett, because he is one of our key players. And uh, I'm really kind of hoping that Smith might get a goal or something. That'd be nice. McManon, he's had a player of the match performance so far. Set piece takes it, goes over. Close, but no cigar. And after, well, three goals in the first half, this second half, it's been underwhelming. It's been underwhelming, to say the least. Redfern whips it in back post, win that header. Williams saves. Nice stop there by the uh, the Hartlepool goalkeeper to re restore some pride. However, I don't, I don't know how much of that's left after the first half performance here. It's been such a dominant display by us uh, at Boston. That's a header that's going to be saved by Williams. 3-0 looks like it's going to be how it finishes here. It is going to finish 3-0. A really good away result. I think that's our first win in a lot of games, really. We've had some really disappointing results, particularly in preseason. Of course, we lost that opening game of the year. But uh, that result sees us go up into ninth ahead of Darlington. And uh, you can see Bournemouth, who actually beat us on the opening day of the season. They lost. Um, so we have gone ahead of them as well on goal difference, which is nice stuff. So, of course, as you can see here, it is August the 14th. That was a midweek game. And I've still got a few transfers here and there that I still want to tie up if I can. We did release a few players, so we freed up some spaces in our team, as you guys already saw. Um, Stoke have bid for Daryl Clare. I don't want to. I don't want to. Scully has rejected. Oh, well, that's a shame. Um, 
Brian's transfer bid's been accepted. Brian would be a really good player if we can get him in, just because he can play everywhere in midfield, and that'd be a really nice option to have on the bench. Chester have accepted our bid for Harkness. Good little centre-back. Could be a nice option to have on the bench. 31, though. I don't really want to give him too long a contract. I don't know if he'll accept that, because it's significantly shorter than what he wants, but for his age, I can't really justify giving him too much more. Telford have uh, withdrawn their offer for Simon Featherstone. Uh, Hereford are still interested in him. 500k is quite a lot of money. Is he is Weatherstone our kind of third choice striker? Is our is he even he's not even our fourth? I should probably sell him. I, I will sell him. That's the first player I'm going to sell in this save. Not not because we need the money, but just because it's it's not a bad transfer bid. I think for a player who is just not going to play with us a lot. It'd be nice to recoup some money, considering the amount of money we've been spending so far. We've spent £10 million in Division 3. That said, I think the team is significantly stronger. I think that Hartlepool result is hopefully going to be an indication of perhaps how our season uh, will continue to emerge. I did see someone comment, I think it was on Episode 2, about the fact I should play a 4-3-3, because apparently that's an OP tactic in this game. Like, it's really strong, as is the 4-3-1-2, apparently. So we might give that we might give that a go next game. I don't know if I have the players to play it, but we can probably play players out of position given how good our team is. Can we get him Sebastic? I'm expecting him to immediately decline. I forgot about this, but if you didn't see the end of episode two, he's a, a player in uh, he's not gonna accept, is he? 18 years old. He's the current Monaco backup goalkeeper, I do believe. He has really low wages, but I, I don't think we're going to be able to sign him no matter what. I'm gonna just give him a ridiculous bid because he's 18 years old and absolutely insane. Not expecting that big deal to go through. It was really to test the waters of can we sign players from abroad, from kind of European B kind of tier teams. Or are they just going to decline? Yeah, he's rejected and he's not prepared to play for the team no matter what contract he's offered. Well, that's, that's a little bit harsh. Right, we're playing Wrexham here. How long is Bennett out for? Did I, did I delete the inbox message? Is there a way we can see injuries? Oh, we can. Five days he's going to be out for, so he's not going to be in for today's game. So we'll bring Redfern back into the side. Let's, let's try the 4 3 3. People will tell. So I can't remember who it was. Whoever it was, thank you for telling me about this. I'm going to give it a go. So these are all centre forwards. So I guess they're just kind of straight out strikers. Then we need a right mid, a centre mid, and a left mid, which is fine. Um, we've got those spots in our team now. I'm going to sort out the, uh, the team here because. When you release players, it really it creates slots that the players go into. That's how you know how close you are to kind of filling your squad limit. But it does get a little bit annoying uh, when you've got all the players and all the slots in between. So Weatherstone's on his way out. We've got a few more backups coming in here and there. Um, do I want to get in one more striker potentially? I know I, I'm thinking we look at what strikers are, are available, and I don't know if. If there's a, a really good one, well, sorry, not if there's a good stroke, but if uh, the 4 3 3 works for us, we might just sign a striker. We're going to try and get Humphreys, I think, from Hartlepool. I don't know if he played for us in that game that we just played against Hartlepool, but I think he'd be a useful little striker for us to get, assuming he'd be interested in talking to us. Of course, Scully uh, already turned us down, which was a little bit heartbreaking. He, of course, also plays in Division 3. The fact there's players in our division still willing to turn us down. Kind of gives you an idea of the overall calibre and standard that we have here at Boston. Despite the fact we have £500 million, the way this game works, can't just go out and buy all the best players in the world. That said, Dean Ashton playing for the Division 2 crew. I'm really hoping that we get promoted, crew don't get promoted, and, and then we can sign him next year. That's the dream. I don't see that happening. I'd love to get my hands on Dean Ashton. He's such a good player in this save. And Well, some of you guys know I have a few family ties to uh, Norwich City. I'm actually uh, obviously quite familiar with Dean Ashton as a result of that because he was one of their record transfers at the time when he signed from Crew, And um, I actually bumped into Dean Ashton earlier on this year at Centre Parks. Bizarre story. Um, I was at Sherwood Forest Centre Parks. And it was, it was it Mark Noble had a testimonial. It was the weekend of Mark Noble's testimonial because I saw Dean Ashton on the Saturday at Centre Parks with some family friends and stuff. Had a, a brief conversation with him. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, I'm playing in the, the game tomorrow. And I think he scored either an overhead kick or a really good goal in Mark Noble's testimonial the next day. So, I mean, I'm going to claim credit like the fact that I chatted with him made him a better player. Whether or not that's actually the case, 
Uh, very, very dubious, I guess you could argue. Thomas wins that. Is that going to go in? No, cleared away. It seems like we're on top in this game at the moment, which is good, but we need some end product. The 4 3 3, it seems to be doing the trick in terms of we're getting the ball forward a lot, but we, we need some end product, please, boys. We need, we need a goal to kind of justify this change potentially. It'd be a little bit of a shame to switch to a 4 3 3 in some ways, simply because uh, I've signed so many midfielders and. Well, they wouldn't get much game time between them all. But if it's a if it's a better tactic, if it's going to work well with my team, I've got, I've got to go with it, haven't I? Thomas, breaking through, hits that. Oh, whizzes over the crossbar. I thought that was going to be a chance there. Claire, Thomas is offside. Needs to watch his line. Half time, it's pretty even. If we look at the actual stats themselves, um, we're on top in the game. We're not, we're not massively on top, though, if we're being honest. Let's try and press a little bit more and play a little bit more at attacking. And let's play more down the centre as well. We are playing a narrow formation, so that kind of makes sense. I'm still kind of learning what works and what doesn't work in the LMA manager engine, if I'm honest. Kind of, obviously, every match engine has its own kind of tactics, which just in general tend to be that little bit better. McManon, set piece, can he score? Claire, oh my gosh, what have we just... Well, it's an own goal by... I don't know who that... We're going to go with Dean Lawrence. I've given him a first name. It's questionable defending, I think, is the uh, the best way to describe that. Not the best. Kicks it into his own goal, but we won't complain. Cook hammers it. Is that in? Oh, my gosh. He scored another. He only scores Thunderbolts. What has he done? It's his second goal of the season. It's his second in two games. Nodded down to him. One touch. Bang. Pick that out. I mean, take a bow, Cook. Take a bow. What, I wonder what he's cooking. That doesn't make sense, Jack. Smith turns his man. Can he cut inside now? Options. Hits it. Saved. Thomas can't get there. Cleared away. And uh, we have a set piece now. Cook tries to turn it. McManon. Just give it to Cook and let him shoot. Or you can... What the hell has just happened? McManon has decided he wants to get in on the long shot action. This is the episode of long shots. I don't think F uh, LMA manager has a goal of the a goal of the week feature, but Ma McMahon and Cook are having their own little private competition here. Bots away, McMahon hits it. I mean, the keeper's dived the wrong way. I think there. I think he must just be. I'm going to go with the the idea that he's off sighted as opposed to it being a match engine bug. But um, questionable goalkeeping. But we are three 0 up here. Things things going pretty well. Big ball up. Thomas, please bury that. It's four 0 Let's go. And after the disappointment. The game against Bournemouth, things are starting to click. Maybe the 4 3 3 is the secret. Maybe that is what we have to do. Nodded on there well. I think it was Daryl Clare. And it was, well, Thomas with the finish. And, uh, well, we made some changes at half time. At the end of the game, in this game, you get asked if you want to keep your changes. I will be keeping my changes. Clare hits it. Why not? Why not get in on the action? Uh, everyone <laughs> just wants a long shot now. It's getting a little bit silly, really, isn't it? Daryl Clare wins it. Cook to Waterman, the right back. Thomas hits it. Why not? Oh, I'm saying why not all the time, but I mean, why why not say why not? Oh my gosh, the, it's getting going full meta now, isn't it? It's four 0 We're we're enjoying it. We're in dreamland. Duke in goals not had a lot to do across these last two games. At nil nil at half time, I thought the four three three maybe maybe it's not that great, but well, I have I have to apologise because it's it's turned up here in the second half. And uh, well, now now we've injured one of their players. Let's make some subs here. Let's bring on Rooney at right back. Let's bring in Angel at left uh, mid. Interestingly, Cook, one of the players I might be getting rid of. His shooting's not even that great. Uh, with our last change, we'll bring on Redfern as well, I think, for McManon. Just to get on some fresh legs in the midfield. Just going for the triple sub. There's only seven minutes left now. So we might as well let some players have a little bit of rotation time. Give them an opportunity to show... That's what they're all about. If we do switch to a 4 3 3, the, the midfield position, it's going to be competitive. So everyone deserves a chance. Cook, oh my gosh, he almost scored again. Narrowly over the crossbar. 4 0. I mean, I'm happy. I am very happy with how this has gone. Wrexham, they, they do not know what has hit them here. Redfern up to Smith. Can he get the ball in now? He can't. Dispossessed. Cleared away. Does finish 4 0. I'm, keep, I'm keeping the tactical changes there. Lawrence. With the own goal, Cook and McManon, and then, uh, well, Thomas getting a goal. Four goals for us in the space of ten minutes. A really, really good performance there. And, um, well, after that disappointing opening kind of result, we are back on the resurgence. We're currently fourth in the group. York City, Cambridge, and Kidderminster Harriers, the top three teams there. 
Uh, they're all unbeaten. They've, I think they all had seven points with one draw and two wins in their opening three. So no team flawlessly kind of running away with it at the top of the table, which is good. Hopefully we can emerge as that team after that disappointing kind of opening result, which of course was against Bournemouth. Our next opponent is going to be Bristol Rovers. How good are their players? They've got a really good goalkeeper in Howie. Austin is a good little centre-back. Is that Kevin Austin? I assume it is. It's really weird when you recognise players from a game this old. Harkness has rejected our contract terms. I guess that's because of the contract length, isn't it? Because I'm only giving him a two-year deal. Let's go with that. Duke has shown him improvement. Duke is just constantly showing improvement, apparently. He's currently our third best player. It'll be interesting to monitor his growth over... Well, the, the rest of the year. This is going to be a League Cup qualifier game. Apparently, due to the number of teams in the League Cup and perhaps how this game handles it, we have to have a qualifier. And I guess, I think it's ourselves and Bristol playing it because we're teams in the lowest tier that begin with the letter B. I mean, why why else? I'd do it any other way. That makes sense, doesn't it? So we have to play in a qualifier for the League Cup. I might even simulate the game thinking about it because it's the, it's, the it's the League Cup, isn't it? Yeah, I'll tell you what, we will simulate that game. It's against Bristol Rovers. And then uh, we'll finish off with uh, the last league game that we have. Humphrey's offer's been accepted. If we could get him in as a striker, that'd be really nice. That would kind of give us just ridiculous firepower uh, with our kind of free up front. So I'm going to I'm gonna simulate this game, which you can do just by hitting... I think it's square. We'll, we'll find out. Is it square? It is square, right. Now I have to talk over a loading screen. It's like in school, you know, where you get given those presentations, and you probably did this. If, if you didn't do this as a kid, you missed out, but uh, at some schools, as, um, my school did this, they did this challenge where it was like, you must be for 60 seconds on a topic of your choice without stopping, and that's what I feel like I've got to do now, just until it says uh, at the bottom right that the playing match is finished. Now, if I remember correctly, this is going off a very old memory, I have a feeling that the 90 to 100% just goes instantly. That might be wrong, but that's because the fact... Yeah, it does. I don't know why... It, I guess it's because each percentage represents a minute, and rather than just say one of 90 or whatever, or try and work out how many minutes go into a, a kind of fill up a percentage of a game, just does it that way. Either way, we did win that, that game. Thomas and Smith with the goals. Tate got a late equaliser for them. So a way we can view the stats for the game? We can. We dominated the game. Okay, well, that's fine. I expected us to win that game. We've done it with flying colours. We're in the League Cup. In fact, now that I think about it, it might be interesting to see how far we can get in some of these cup competitions because we will have a fairly good squad. Anyway, in terms of the cup, cup draw, we've been drawn against Cardiff City in the uh, the first round. I don't know wh which division Cardiff were in back in 2002. Was it Division division 1? Division 2? Don't even, they weren't a Premier League team. Let's find out. Cardiff, okay, they're t second in Division 2, so they're going to be an interesting team for us to try and take on. They've got a few standout players there. And they've got Robbie Earnshaw as well at 21 years old. Well, that's a, that's a throwback right there. Either way, Crystal Palace doing their kind of annual bid for um, Daryl Clare. Brian has accepted our contract offer. I feel like these are both midfielders, but we'll bring them in anyway. I don't mind getting some healthy competition. It's not going to be like Football Manager where players complain about lack of playtime if we do have just a really stacked midfield. Um, Brighton a bid for Daryl Clare. He's not for sale. Next game, Lincoln City, a derby. Humphreys doesn't want to join us no matter what. That's, the, that's good. That's the end of that dream of signing him. Um, what good non-league strikers were there? Were there any? There weren't, apparently. Let's look at attackers. Elliot or Jones. Could we sign Jones from Wrexham? No, and J Elliot's in his first year of his contract too. Right, what are the other striker options? We've looked at Humphreys. He's by far and away the third best striker in the league, who isn't one of our own players already. Could we go for someone like Lawson? Maybe? I mean, do I need another striker? I feel like I want to get another one just in case. Because we do only have... If we sell Weatherstone, we're only going to have five strikers in our squad. And if we are going to play free up front, that's going to be a problem. In terms of those players that we just signed, you can see here we've got Brian, who is the, the all-rounder centre mid, which I really like. The fact he can play everywhere at centre mid. Because that means he can play right mid for us. And he's by far and away our best midfielder, which makes him a really big signing, actually. I forgot how good he was. 
uh, when I was eyeing him up. So that's good. I'm sorry, Cook. You've scored two screamers this episode, and now you're being dropped from the squad completely. I've also got Harkness, who is going to be a nice little player for us. He's probably going to be uh, starting for us, I think, at left back. Ahead of Bound, and then we'll play Bound on the bench. The reason I got Harkness in here is really because he can play centre mid as well as left back and centre back, so it's a good bit of flexibility. Uh, he's 31, he's coming in on that two-year de uh, two deal that you saw, and he's a bit of a leader as well, which I like in the team. Anyway, those are the tactical instructions that we did have last game, so that's good that they've now saved. Um, is there a way to set your captain? I don't know where it would be. Is it under uh, player roles? Uh, right, so we want our captain to be... I think Do I go with Morgan as my captain, the former Lincoln captain? First game he's going to be captain in is against Lincoln. They're gonna they're gonna love that. I think we'll have McManon as our playmaker actually in centre mid. In terms of free kick taker, uh, McManon has the kind of trait for that. Do we have any corner takers? We we don't actually. So I, you know what? I'll stick McManon on them as well. Why not? Then man marker. We'll go with Woodward. He is, I believe, the better marker out of him and Morgan. Yeah, he is. As you can see here, Woodward, good marking, not great pace. Morgan, uh, kind of captain, former Lincoln City man, all about the pace, which which I, which I like in a player. Right, let's get into this game. It's going to be at York Street. It's a home game. Lincoln coming as kind of the, the away side, our Lincolnshire rivals. If you don't know anything about this game, it's a fixture which hasn't happened, I don't think, in a competitive environment in a number of years now. But back in its day, this was the rivalry. Weatherstone's leaving, carries out for five weeks. Bennett's on his way out. What players are we bringing in? None. I need to bring in that striker. I, ne I never I never sorted out the striker that I wanted. Sorry if my controller's really loud as well. <laughs> but I feel like it's part of the charm of these games, hearing the mashing of my controller. It's a shame that you can't sort by skill on this. Maffy. Old player, but could be good. Place of York. Let's see if we can get him in. He's 33. I'd probably only want him on a one-year deal, maybe a two-year deal, but he could still be pretty good. The other option's Tate, but if Maffey wants to come in, I'll probably go with him. I guess we could always just put in a bid for Tate as well, just on the basis that one of them will probably turn us down, and if neither of them turn us down, I'll just cancel the bid for Tate. But I'm excited. We're getting into the Lincolnshire Derby. Is it going to be on a Sunday as well? Results. Oh, wait, no. This is just a Friday night game. Manchester United beating Chelsea. Well, there you go. Right. Saturday, 24th of August, 2002. What would I have been doing at this day? I would have been nine years old. Man, those were the days. No, no worries in the world. Just a bit of LMA. Primary school. Our youth team lost to Lincoln. I'm not. I'm not having that. If I could fine my youth team, I'd be fining them right now for losing to Lincoln City. This is a big game. As someone originally from Boston, who moved to Lincoln. This was this was always the game that I looked forward to because it was the game where I knew I was going to be chatting with people um, from school about it, and either I'd be able to go in with a beaming smile on my face, or, or they or they'd be mocking me because well, Boston wouldn't have got the result that I wanted them to get. Right, this is what we're going to go with. Part of me wants to play Bennett, and then the other part of me goes, but he's really old. But I probably should play him ahead of McManon. He is a substantial improvement. So we'll go with Bennett there. I actually really like our team right now. I'm getting attached to them already. I'll be even more attached to them as well if we can win this uh, game against Lincoln. We've all be we've been all about the long shots in our first two games. I'm hoping for more of the same in this game here. That's going to be the, the kind of challenge ahead. It's at York Street. We're playing a 4-3-3, of course, that we're going to stick with. We're going to see how this works. We're, we're going with the instructions that we changed at halftime. It's going to be Thomas, Clarence, Smith up front, Brian, Bennett and Allen in midfield. Back four of Waterman, Woodward, Morgan and Harkness. Morgan, of course, the centre mid, former Lincoln City captain. We signed him this year. Bit of drama around that. And a duke in goal for us. For them, they've got Alan Marriott in goal. Paul Mayo at left back. Uh, who else they got? They've got... I don't recognise as many of those players as I thought I would. I recognise players like uh, Buckley and Cam. I actually moved to Lincoln. How, where, how old would I have been when I moved to Lincoln? Like 11 or 12. So I guess this is two or three years before I really knew the Lincoln side. I feel like when you're nine years old, you don't necessarily know the, the, the names of the players who play for your rivals. Uh, particularly when it's kind of a, a Division three kind of fourth-tier rivalry at that. But I'm kind of a lot... Oh, that's a hit. 
cleared away though. Nice effort though. We're testing them early, which is what I want to see. Bennett, can, can we make something happen here? Loads of space. Allen, why pass it there to Allen? Why do that? Thomas, oh my gosh. I thought he'd scored. Marriott, nice save by him to tip it over the crossbar. Ball whipped in though. Smith wins it. Marriott saves again. Our team is loving a long shot right now. Brian offside there, of course. Making his debut the right midfielder. So a point for him to prove as well. And Thomas is now offside. Watch your line, boys. What is this all about? Mayo bringing the ball forward. Now with Hart. Bennett intercepts, though. Now we're bringing the ball forward. One well in the air there by Thomas. Now Brian, the new man on the block, fouled. Wins a free kick. Free kick whipped in. Daryl Clare in the box. Is that in? I don't know what's happened. It looked like it hit the goal and went through the inside of the net. I'm not going to question 2003 physics. Smith hits it. Marriott with another save. We're all over them. We are all over them. It's another long shot. It goes flying over. We need a goal, though. Before half-time, we need a goal to settle the nerves if we can get one, please. That would be nice. I love this match engine, though. The, the, how, oh, my gosh. They've, I don't like it anymore. Don't like the match engine. Farrow scores there for Lincoln. They, they go into the lead against the run of play, I think it's fair to say. An awful throw in. I think it was Waterman, our right back, with a throw in there. And then Farrow just charges through and gets it. Either way, we're now going to try and have our own effort. Daryl Clare with a speculative effort, to say the least. I feel like I'm perhaps to blame for us losing this game. Oh my gosh, Bennett, what are you doing? What is with these long shots? I've not. There isn't an option in this game to turn on or off long shots. This is just what my players want to do with their lives. Um, but no, I feel like I'm somewhat to blame at the moment. I've made a lot of changes to this side. Maybe I've stripped the heart out of Boston United. None of these players look up for the derby right now. I need to get into it. Morgan, former Lincoln City captain, now our captain, wins the tackle there. But they are still on the attack. And actually, Paul Mayo playing right back for them, it seems. But either way, it's 1-0 Lincoln. Poor first half. We need, we need to step it up. Step it up, we will try. Bennett whips it in. Headed on. Is that going to go in? Marriott saves it. Rebound not won. Smith keeps it in, though. Whips it in. Thomas. Oh, he, did, he got fouled. Okay, well, we now have a set-piece. Ball whipped in. Daryl Clare win the header. He wins it. Goldwood's looping header goes wide. We're all over them. Bennett, centre mid, knocks it on. Hits that. Saved by Marriott. Marriott's just man, man of the match right now. Man of the match right now. We are all over them. I'm, I'm liking the 4-3-3. Free free. I feel like it's inevitable. I feel like it's a foregone conclusion we will score in this game. I don't feel like Marriott can keep us out forever. That Famous last words. They're now going to win 1-0 off, off the back of that. But... We're looking good going forward. We just need that killer edge. And, well, Thomas beats his man, gets fouled. Now we have a chance. Bennett dinks it, tries to get it to Claire, but doesn't. And, well, now we give them a set piece. That said, they don't make anything of it. Cleared away. Can we counter now? How long before I go more attacking? I feel like I have to do it soon. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it now. Why not? I can't actually go that much more attacking. Let's press more. Is there, I don't think there's anything else you can do. There's not. Right, well, we'll do that. Has anyone underperformed drastically for us in terms of match ratings? I mean, look how good Marriott's game's been for them. You compare the match ratings, Marriott is literally the difference maker, and then, I guess, Ferro as well, who um, obviously scored for them. I mean, Waterman's not had a great game, but that's just from his one mistake that left, led to a goal. I'll tell you what, Thomas hasn't had the best game, so I think we'll bring on Douglas for him. In truth, Douglas isn't actually that great. Although, actually, can any of our other men play up top? Because that might sway me. They can't. That's a shame. So we'll, we'll bring on Douglas. That This is kind of the game where it'd be nice to have a, like a fourth striker almost to bring on someone who can really make a difference. Because right now, it's just, it's just been a bit disappointing. Maybe Douglas can step up to the plate. Maybe he can be the hero we need. Because, well, Thomas had a really poor game and we need someone to... Do something in this game. We've been all over them. It's been Alan Marriott just winning the game for them. Smith through. Douglas is offside. I mean, he, he's, he is definitely Thomas's spirit animal with these offsides. Just stood miles off there. Throw in. Tries to get it to Douglas. Cleared away, though, for a corner by Lincoln. This corner doesn't even beat the first man now. This is massively disappointing. We've been all over them. We've been all over them in this game. I am really not sure how they are... Uh, 
ahead. Definitely in the second half, it's been a little bit more even. We've not had quite the same kind of volume of shots. Oh, no. Daryl Clare hits the crossbar. Douglas, please. He hits it. Let's go. The sub scores to make it 1-1. In truth, it all came from Daryl Clare's long shot here. On the turn, he just hits it on his left peg. Hits the crossbar, lands to Douglas. Douglas finds the back of the net. His first league goal of the season. It's 1-1. Is there time to get another? We have a set piece. Launched forward. Give it to Douglas. Douglas finds it. Can he shoot? Can he score? He hits it. Oh my gosh, he has scored. The hero. Two goals, two minutes. Douglas, what a man you are. I don't know who you are. I'm going to go and Google you to find out your first name. Because we deserve to know it. Second goal of the season for him. A big set piece. Launched forward. Flicked on by Lincoln. One touch though by Douglas. And on that left peg of his, he just swings it and scores. Can he get a hat-trick now? That's the dream. He's through. Can he get the hat-trick? He hits it. He's got the hat-trick. What has just happened? What, what the hell? Douglas, with the hat-trick, I mean, take about my son. The ball just gets launched forward here. Brian knocks it onto Douglas. And Douglas, in off the post. Take a bow. Take the biggest bow you can take, son. You deserve it. He's got a hat-trick in, I don't know how, a matter of minutes. Off the bench. Is it the fastest hat-trick ever? I don't know. Could, could he get another? Give it to Douglas. Why not? Set piece. It's hit. It goes wide. 3-1 is perhaps the result we deserve. But for a long part in this game, it's just not looked like that was going to be possible. Douglas. A hat-trick in four minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all, my friend. Maybe deserves a little bit of a shout and a chance to play more in the team off the back of that. That is a fantastic result to beat Lincoln 3-1. If we look at the league table, where where were Lincoln? Lincoln, actually, they've only won one of their opening four games. Ourselves, on the other hand, we are second in the group. We actually have the best goal difference in the division by quite some way. Kidderminster Harriers doing well. Uh, worth noting that Hartlepool could still finish, like, leapfrog us because they have got a game in hand. But uh, two of the other teams who were unbeaten, I believe Cambridge, and I can't remember, I think it was York as well, actually, uh, who were both kind of been unbeaten. Cambridge drew a game, York lost a game. So that's given us a little bit of breathing room there. But, well, Douglas, what a man. What a hero to save us right there. We needed a man to step up to the plate and... He scored a hat-trick in four minutes off the bench. I mean, what more could you want from a player? I, I don't know. What, what, I mean, what, what can you say? That was absolutely insane. He's improved his technique and he's improved his shooting. I'm not surprised. I am not surprised one little bit. What transfers have we got going on? So we've got Tate and Maffey still going through. I kind of want to wrap up those transfers and then maybe take a little bit of a break. So we might... Play one more game and then hope the transfers get done before deadline day. Because uh, my plan is maybe after the next game we will play the game. Have a, you know, I'll play a few games off camera perhaps. Maybe even half a season. I don't know. You know I'll play some games and then come back. I feel like these early years of the save, you know. We, I don't want to say we want to necessarily kind of plow through the save. But I want to play it and I want to get through it and make sure that we do eventually get to the Premier League without me playing. I was thinking about this. I talked about playing every game live. If I do three or four games an episode, that means every season is going to be about 11 episodes. I don't want it to take 40 seasons plus for us to get to the Premier League. I want it to be, I don't know, I want to say in the first 20, 30 kind of episodes really that we're in the Premier League and that we have kind of some fun spending all the money that we get. I feel like that's going to make for a more entertaining kind of series than one where I just commentate everything live. That said, I feel like it's just nice to chat with you guys and these videos provide a really nice platform to do that. Claire, you're through. Please score. Daryl Claire. I don't know what our team has done today. 4-3-3 seems to be really good. I mean, we had a good team. We have been significantly underperforming, I think it's fair to say. The fact that we lost to Bournemouth, I think we drew with Dagenham as well in pre-season. It seems like we've got rid of whatever it was in our system that was causing us to struggle to get goals. We're looking really good here. Of course, we won 3-1 the game before that. I'm not even sure what the score was. I think we've had two clean sheets in our three games. Unfortunately, that goal that we conceded against Lincoln, a little bit disappointing. But we've bounced back well, and we're looking good. I think it was 4... Was it 4-0 against Hartlepool? The games are already blurring into one. There was just so many goals, and... Well, I, I want to see some more here, if we can, please. 20 minutes gone. It We're 1-0 up. Still want to defend well as well, if possible. That's that'd be nice, uh, <laughs> especially when you kind of look at. Um, oh, we've got to get well, Daryl Clare. Daryl Clare's got two. He's a player I was a little bit worried about actually. Daryl Clare. He was struggling for goals. 
He's not struggling for goals anymore. He's got another one to add to his collection there. It's his third of the season. It's his second of the game. And, uh, well, I, I want to say our main man, of course, a player who played for Boston in real life when we took over this team. Um, one of the few kind of survivors, I guess, of my original squad. He he is the main man. But um, it's good to see him getting on the score sheet and kind of playing an integral part so far in this game. He might even be able to do more here. He's got the ball. Threads it through to Brian. I'm not sure what their right back is doing. What is the match engine doing with defensive lines on this game? I saw someone comment, actually. I, I think it was on episode one or episode two of this series saying that, Oh my gosh, this has a better match engine than FM. L literally not true. <laughs> I feel like sometimes when you look at how deep the defensive lines are, it's actually hilarious. For example, here, I can almost guarantee that our defend. Well, you can see our defenders like on the edge of their 18-yard box. There's times where you think the midfield line of their team is actually their defensive line. That's how kind of um, what do you call it? How high up the pitch they're playing, and also. Uh, you can kind of notice it a little bit with our free up front, but whenever the ball kind of leaves their half and gets cleared, our free strikers, if they're near each other, all just st stood in a flat line waiting for it because they all play centre forward. But anyway, it's 2-0. It's good. York, away from home. I find it weird that we play at York Street, even though we're from Boston. I mean, work that one out. Today we're playing on York. What's York Stadium called? I wish I knew. Answers on a postcard. What was York Stadium called in 2002? Let me know. Write, write a le and postcard and send it to me. I'm not, I'm not giving out my address. Some people have mentioned, actually, I should get a P.O. box. I've looked at P.O. boxes. I don't think people realise how expensive they are. I feel like if I was to open a P.O. box just to receive postcards, it probably wouldn't be worth it. Not to say that in a mean way. I don't know what, other, what else people would send me, but I see some people who do like P.O. box openings and... People send them weird stuff. I, like You've probably seen it. If you watch a few YouTubers who have P.O. boxes, it's always interesting seeing what people send them. I feel like if I was just to open up a P.O. box for a few hundred pounds and then just get postcards. Not that I'm ungrateful about postcards in any way. <laughs> but I feel like I don't know what I'd do with the post. I guess I'd put them on a wall in my room. But even, like if everyone sent me a postcard from where they're from, the more I think about this, the more I'm thinking actually I wouldn't mind the postcards. Sometimes people ask me, what does answers on a postcard mean? It literally means, like, let me know the answers. You don't actually have to send me them on a postcard. Just write them in the comments. The comment section is the equivalent of a postcard in the 21st century. Who's underperforming for us? Smith has played badly. Waterman's played badly. Bennett's played badly. Let's bring on McMahon for Bennett. And let's bring on Douglas. Let's bring on Douglas for Smith. Let's see if he can do it again. Let's see if Douglas is just born to score on off the bench. I mean, I might not even have to worry about the two strikes I'm trying to set. Well, okay, Waterman's now been sent. He's had enough. I probably should have subbed him off. I didn't. We're now down a man. We're without a right back. But we're 3-0 up. 20 minutes left. We should be okay. Douglas playing left strike today. He hits it. Oh, my gosh. I thought he was going to score again. He actually won a free kick there as well, which was a little bit strange. I guess he got fouled after he dispatched of his uh, initial shot. If they sc okay, that, I, I didn't even slow down. Oh, wait, that's Maffey who just got... Well, we're looking to sign this guy. It's his first goal of the season. Let's see how good he is up front. I mean, questionable defending by Ma by our team. Maffey, though, a man we want to sign if we can. He's 30-something, he's 30 but I feel like he'd be a good player, and he's, he's shown us here what he's made of with that kind of goal. Brian with the set piece. Voices over the crossbar from that free kick. We've not had a long shot left yet this game. There's not a lot of time left to get it either. I'm still holding out hope that there might be one coming. 84 minutes gone though. Only six minutes left for something to happen. Douglas can't keep it in. Can't get a goal yet this game. There's still time though. I still believe in Douglas. I still believe he can do it. But not if Thomas just stand, stands off the, the pitch. Then, then we probably won't do it. Give it to Doug. Oh, he's not there. He's not there. That's going to be full time. 3-1 though. Good result. Waterman sent off is a little bit of a concern, but we have players who can just slot in there immediately, so that it's definitely not the end of the world, so to say. Look at the league table. That win puts us in a really good position. We move, or we don't move at all. We stay in second. Kidderminster still unbeaten. We still have better goal difference than them. Uh, obviously, the top three teams in Division 3 get automatic promotion. Fourth to seventh get kind of playoff spots, so we're looking quite comfortable for a playoff spot right now. And it turns out that if you press the bumper buttons, you can flick through all the divisions. Who's top? Bolton Wanderers in fourth. Leeds United in fifth. Well, this is definitely 2002, isn't it? 
<laughs> right, let's disconnect. Let's let's just rage quit on that bombshell. Let's not do that, actually. This has been a long episode. If you've watched until this point, leave me a comment. Le let me know. I was about to say, let me know your favourite Bolton Wanderers player. But that's a little bit obscure. Just write JJ Okocha. If you've got this far, if you're on your phone, pause the video, load up the comments, write JJ Okocha. If you don't know who JJ Okocha is, like... I don't know what you're doing with your life, and you must be a younger viewer. Go Google him. Go Google JJ. What a man he was. I say was. He's still alive. Just, just I assume, I'm going to, yeah, he is. He must be. I feel like I would have known if he died. But um, he's the guy who came up with the, I don't want to say he came up with the rainbow flick, but he certainly made it mainstream. Okay, so Maffey is not going to be able to come to us. York City's board have basically said no. Bristol Rovers have accepted an offer for Tate. Still feel like Tate would be a good player to get in, even if Douglas is going to do something for us. I'll give him a two-year deal. And uh, hopefully that transfer is going to be done by this Berry game, because the deadline day is coming up very soon. And um, I don't want to do another game as a live com this episode. My voice is already starting to get worn out. We have the group stages here for the Champions League. Look at that. Liverpool, AEK Athens, Ajax and Shakhtar. Deportivo in Group F. There's some weird teams here, isn't there? Lons, I don't feel like they've qualified for a uh, Champions League in a long time. Locomotive, Moscow. I feel like they got relegated this year in real life. Was there any other weird teams here? Newcastle, well, I say weird. Newcastle finished second, I think, the year before this. Um, in the kind of 2001-2002 season. I think they were finished second. That's based off my Premier League years knowledge, which may, may or may not be limited. Daryl Clare is not for offer. Please stop trying to buy him. Thank you. I'm actually getting annoyed by the Daryl Clare bids. I shouldn't, but I feel like they're trying to unsettle him. Even though that isn't a thing in this game. <laughs> I still feel like they're, they're unsettling him. All these teams from like kind of Division 1 upwards. Like kind of just going in for our players. Why am I getting having to watch all the Euro like all the cup draws here? This is the I guess this is the way for cup. I mean, Ipswich Town are in it. Weird, weird year. It was football was weird, wasn't it? All these years ago. Weird sport. Weird year. I say weird year. It was it was normal around that time, I guess. We've lost to Berry. Livingston a bit on Clare again. He's not for sale. He's not for sale. Right, that that Tate deal. We're gonna have to wait and see because I'm not gonna do the Berry game. Um, but no, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit more random, a little bit more ranty, a little bit more kind of free-flowing, I guess you could say, as I said earlier. If you've got until the end, JJ Okocha this comment section. I want to see it JJ'd out. Um, I don't even know what that means. Right, I'm going to end this here. This has been a bit of a, I don't want to say a spontaneous live comp, but it's been a little bit more... Uh, le well, less regimented than, say, my Football Manager live comp, certainly. A little bit here, there, and everywhere. Not my finest work, but not my worst. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. As I said, when we'll be back next time, I'm not entirely sure, because I want to get through this save, not quickly, but particularly the early years. I, I don't want to spend too long, I feel like, going through everything. So, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know when it'll be. Hopefully you guys stick around. And, uh, yeah, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.